Over the years, making creative content with cameras and storytelling has become an absolute dream job for me. And to be honest, I wouldn't be able to do it without you watching. Yeah, you watching this video right now. I am extremely thankful for everyone who's been a part of this community and I regularly try to create videos that you guys actually want to see. This is actually a hard thing to balance sometimes because if I only made content that was suggested in my comment sections and in my DMs, a few things would happen. I would probably get hurt with some of the crazy suggestions, I would definitely be broke, and more commonly, I might not enjoy what I actually do here. Every once in a while, you just have to do things because you actually want to do it, not because of peer pressure from those around you. If you constantly cater to an outside factor, then eventually you're going to burn yourself out and not be passionate about why you began doing things in the first place. Now, with that being said, sometimes the stars align and just a random idea that you have is actually an idea that a lot of people are interested in too. And that is exactly what has happened here. So come with me on this trip as I get started on my next vehicle project. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I am currently in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and some of you guys may already know what that means. This all started at the very first video that I posted this year when I was talking about future plans and bigger projects that I wanted to work on. I mentioned a lot of things about the 2024 Tacoma, and that's kind of on my list of things to do. However, I want to get a hybrid model, and they have not yet even released pricing on it at the point of me filming this video. So I also mentioned something in that video that I was kind of interested in but I know it doesn't really fit exactly what I've been doing but I've always had kind of the interest in doing what we are going to do today. Now a lot of you guys watched that video and you left comments. I'm talking like 200 plus comments saying you should definitely get that vehicle and that vehicle is what I am picking up today. What's up my guy? What up? Let's run it back. We're doing it again. Second time almost in a year. How you doing? All right guys, one hour later and we are up north of Tulsa, Oklahoma and in Independence, Kansas at Quality Toyota where Peyton, if you don't remember him from a video about a year ago, he's a general manager up here. You helped me find a super difficult vehicle to get last year, which was a manual transmission Supra, which is still hard to get, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, we've got one more since yours one so, other in a whole yeah, year one a year and the only reason we get one is because we sold you one so we're in the allocation process so well i'm glad we thank that you helped. for that buddy <laughs> yeah i think you even sent me a picture of the one you're like you know anyone else who wants yeah, one yeah. so the reason i'm talking with peyton um again if you guys haven't caught the super video i basically posted on instagram and was like who works at Toyota that can help me with this project? He luckily watched my videos and he was able to find kind of a unicorn car at the time. So I went through the same process. That video that I mentioned, I talked about getting a 2024 Tacoma mm -hmm. and I said, it would be cool if I could get a Tundra. And like 200, 250 of you all commented, yes, Tundra, get a Tundra, get a Tundra. I guess it's because they kind of lack in the overlanding world. There aren't many people who build them and do stuff with them. And of course, the truck that I wanted is kind of a unicorn truck. Yep. You were able to find it within like, it was like a few days after I called you. Yeah. You know, um, I've, I've realized that the harder you try, to find a customer a rare vehicle the luckier you get and of course we had to get lucky you know an sr5 tundra they're on dealer lots everywhere but with the specific packaging that talon needed um there was only a couple regions in the country that were bringing this truck in so i figured out what region that was made a few phone calls and got lucky and here we are so I'm going to show you the truck now, but if you guys are ever interested in finding something that's kind of difficult, like the truck that we're about to look at, give Peyton a call, Quality Toyota, I'll leave some links and stuff in the description down below. So check out my brand new 2024 Tundra.
right now I've done my research on these trucks I knew this is exactly what I wanted but there's so much that goes into it with the different level packages especially with me getting into a Tundra it's a little bit different than the Tacoma so I'm just gonna have Peyton go over everything because this dude buys and sells them all the time so let the so, master take it away and an SR5 would be easy to get they're probably in dealer lots everywhere what makes this truck special and perfectly suited for Talon and his application is the obviously the TRD off-road package. A big package for Talon is going to be the premium audio, the 14 inch screen. And then we also have the TRD technology package. That's gonna include a lot of different drive modes, multi-train select, downhill assist and crawl, so not only do we have all of the tech for off-roading on the inside, but we also have different wheels and AT tires on the outside, which I'm probably going to change, let's be honest. But you change them on every car you've ever had. <laughs> the Supra, does the Supra have the factory Supra wheels? Supra has factory does wheels it? and nice. tires still, yeah. Nice. It's different. And then there's a few more things with the off-road package too. This package has the bigger fuel tank. Definitely you'll need that. That's Up huge. in the mountains, absolutely. Yeah. Wheels and tires like you mentioned, and it has your multi-terrain select, snow, sand, rocks, completely tunes the suspension and the powertrain to optimize your performance and traction. So having just like all these creature comforts, the big infotainment screen was a big one for me. Even back here in the bed, this truck has a spray in liner already, so I don't have to run like a mat or anything back there and that will keep my gear from sliding around. And there's a lot of little, little things too, like a red TRD push button start, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then your aluminum sport pedals. I mean, we could go over the little things all day on this truck, but I'm sure you'll change that foot pedal out to a footprint <laughs> pedal. Yeah, you know, orange. Change, uh, change, orange, 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 yeah, yeah. orange one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool, man. I appreciate the overview. Thanks so much for finding yeah, dude, this, dude. For sure. I mean, I'm going to come anytime. to you for anything anytime. like that. So like I said, if you guys are really looking for that very specific Toyota, just like me when it comes to basically any truck, any car that you've seen me buy over the past couple of years, Peyton's a guy to talk to. He will find a needle in a haystack and take care of you. Here we'll try. We'll try to. We'll try. <laughs> we'll probably get it done. <laughs> I have faith in him, so I think you guys should too. All right, guys, we're moving quick through this video. I have already left Quality Toyota, and I've been driving for, like, at least two hours now, and I decided to stop. Not for gas, though. I've driven, like, 200 miles or so, and I'm still above half a tank because of that upgrade. The 32.2-gallon tank means that I will probably only have to stop once on my way back to Colorado, which is insane. So stopped at a truck stop, got some snacks, got some water, and I'm just going to keep on going until we get closer to empty because I want to see what the actual range is with this truck. Now, with that being said, I want to spin you guys around here so you can take a look at what I'm looking at, and I am absolutely loving this truck. I know it's early because I just picked this truck up, but it is such an improvement over even the third gen Tacoma. Like a 24 third gen Tacoma, this thing is way nicer than it because they don't really change the interiors much. Now this big screen has been absolutely awesome. I've been running Apple CarPlay wirelessly, so I don't even have to have my phone plugged into anything, which is a nice touch. You got all your apps on here, everything that you need, and then I've been running it in the split screen like this. So I got directions, the map, music and calendar stuff there. The leather steering wheel option was a very nice upgrade as well. And with the TRD off-road package, you have some nice little accents like this really nice gear selector here. Now when it comes to the drive modes, I have been driving this thing in eco most of the time because I want to see how long I can stretch this tank out. But there was a time or two where I hit the tow haul mode and then if I turn the knob, that will put me in tow plus. So this thing absolutely freaking moves compared to my Tacoma. I'm obviously making a lot of comparisons between this and the Tacoma because that's what you guys have seen me driving for the most part on the channel. But man, the V6 twin turbo in this thing, I've never driven one before. I know they've been out for like two years now, but I was missing out. Power delivery is awesome and this thing is an absolute blast to drive. I already kind of got it in my head that if I didn't live in Colorado or places with really tight trails, 
This Tundra might be the only truck that I would own. I am of course saying that before I'm able to drive a fourth gen Tacoma, especially the hybrid. Gas model doesn't really interest me, but when it comes to that truck, I think the hybrid is going to be a real winner. So, so now that I've got the Tundra, I of course am going to be doing a lot of things with this truck on the channel. And I still have my eyes set on a hybrid fourth gen Tacoma whenever those might come out, which means I'm probably going to sell my third gen. I'm not gonna get too far ahead of myself there. For now, I'm just going to enjoy my time with this Tundra and then we'll see whenever Toyota actually releases those hybrids because it seems like things are a little delayed. So I'm gonna gather some more of my thoughts. I have 450 miles to go till home. It's about six and a half hours ETA around midnight mountain time. I'm gonna write down some notes on this drive, that way I can give you guys a first, true, absolute first impression of the 2024 Toyota Tundra. Wow, gas cap holder. My Tacoma didn't have that. Let's see how much this beast takes. So I've been on the road for like, I think six hours. I'm probably about 200 miles out from Denver, from home right now, and still loving the truck, obviously. I'm gonna hop inside quick and check this out. Because this truck is completely stock right now, my range was actually spot on. I took it down to about 10 miles left until empty. It could probably go like 30 miles past that, but I figured I would stop. This long range tank is already one of my favorite things when it comes to a vehicle like this because you guys know I road trip all the time and when I can just power through and get to my destination, that makes my life a lot easier. It's kind of like my storyteller. I have a 47 gallon fuel tank in that and I'm able to drive like 700 miles without stopping. So from Independence, Kansas all the way back to Denver, Colorado, this is going to really be my only stop. This is also going to be great for the overlanding aspect of things. I can fill up, drive to the mountains, do multiple days off-road before ever seeing a fuel station, and I should be completely fine because it's such a large tank. Now, there are a lot of other features that I've really been enjoying with this thing. I'm gonna turn the accessory mode on. Currently sitting at 426 miles. It'll probably be around 600 miles by the time I get home. And now for some features up here on the dash, this little icon right here is a lane steering assist. And what that does is if you are being a bad driver and going over the lines, the truck will actually kind of steer to keep you in your lane. Now I thought this would be kind of intrusive, but it actually works really flawlessly and I've been enjoying it so far. One feature up from this, which this truck does not have, is lane centering, which seems even cooler because instead of kind of bouncing between the edges of the lane, it will actually keep you centered in the lane somehow, I'm assuming with cameras. And the Prime RAV4 that Peyton picked me up with actually had that, and I wish this truck had it, but unfortunately it doesn't, so just gonna have my hands on the wheel all the time. Another cool feature, which I didn't even really think about, is the rear view mirror right here. You, of course, have all of your garage controls here, but then you have some other buttons here. What is that for? If I flip this, that thing turns into an actual, kind of like a backup camera. So if I have a bunch of stuff in the bed or maybe if I have my tent mounted, this camera is actually pulling this feed from the back of the cab, like up where the brake light is. So you have your regular rear view mirror like this, but then when you flick that, you have a live view out the back. And it's kind of trippy because you can tell that it is like a video screen, but there's a bunch of different settings here that you can dive into. I haven't messed with them yet but it looks like you can change a bunch of different parameters there. I'm gonna dive into that more in the future. Pretty cool feature though. Also up here we have a sunglass holder, which I forgot on this trip and I have been regretting until the sun went down. But then we have a push open button here. Check this out. Power rear window. Is that useful to me at all? 
I don't know. I never really used it on my Tacoma, but it's pretty cool that I can do it from the push of a button right here. I also found some of these controls down here on the left side pretty useful. This headlight leveling control is pretty nice. If I want to bring my headlights down, I can crank this up to like five. That way I'm not blinding people. As of right now, I've just been running this on zero and I have really nice vision at night. These LED headlights have been phenomenal so far. But in the future, if and when I do make this truck a little bit taller, I can probably just adjust it from there and then not have to worry about the little 10 millimeter bolts that you'll find on some other trucks. One more cool feature up here in the cockpit area. Let me know if you guys wanna see like in-depth stuff of all of this here, but we have the view button. I didn't realize this at the time, but there are cameras all over this truck. So this is me sitting here next to the gas pump and there is a 360 view but there's also a lot of other functionality here. You can change the color of the truck. There we go, got a white truck. Before we dive into that, I think I do need to have the truck running, so we are done pumping fuel. 75 bucks, 25 gallons, so I still had quite a bit of gas left. I'm assuming this thing is full and the pump didn't just shut off. Yep, it seems full, all right. So right now the truck is currently getting about 16 miles per gallon and that's with cruise control, which is very nice. I don't use that in my Tacoma because it's re-geared and lifted. Cruise control set at about 80 miles an hour and I'm getting 16 miles per gallon. Now if I unlock the truck, let's check out the back seats because this is something that I was curious about and surprisingly there's a decent amount of room. Everyone says that there's no room back here on the double cab versions, but with the way I have my seat set, it is definitely tight here, but I can actually have passengers, which is a nice touch. On my Tacoma, I of course deleted my rear seats because they were completely useless. And then I installed some storage back here, which I actually don't need to do. So let me show you the storage. If I pull this handle here, the seat back flips forward and you have a little bit of storage back here. Over there behind that side is where you'll find everything you need to change a tire. You can actually put car seats in here too. I think it would be pretty tight with a car seat though. And now if I pull this handle, the whole seat lifts up and there is a ton of storage. This is probably something that you guys have seen already, but it's nice because I have the seats, but I have the storage too. Whereas in my Tacoma, I have the storage, but I don't have seats. There are movable dividers, of course, I can pull it from over there. So this is probably going to be where all my recovery gear and hoses live, things like that. And then last but not least back here, we have regular USB, USB-C in the truck too, which I love. And then even a 120 volt outlet, which runs when the inverter is on. So pretty cool features that I'm really enjoying on this truck so far. We've got about, 200 miles, so maybe three and a half hours to home. And unlike when I brought the Supra home from Kansas, this thing is actually staying pretty clean. Look at that, black Tundra logo, black accents on the SR5. Probably gonna take that off anyway. Black Tundra. It's stock, but it's pretty clean. And back inside, red TRD push start. Welcome, that's me. Now let's check out this view before we get moving. When I have the truck in drive, you can see here there are a ton of different views to pick from. We have a front camera, back camera, which shows your tow ball alignment, front, left and right tires, back tires, so you can see down the whole side of the truck. You have a bed view in case you have dogs or something in the back. And then you can also have these features automatically turn on when you're moving at a slow speed, but this is going to be super helpful when off-roading because it's gonna allow me to pick my lines a little bit better. Other than that, I guess it's good for parking when you take your big lifted truck to the mall. And you know that's what I do here on the channel. All right, we have 182 miles till home, only two hours and 43 minutes to go. Let's do this, we'll make it home just before midnight. Well guys, 15 minutes before midnight and I have completed my trip. I spent about 600 miles with this new truck and I'm absolutely loving all of the creature comforts compared to my Tacoma because obviously it's a new truck, it's stock, it drives absolutely great right now and hopefully 
as I start executing some of the plans with this thing, it will continue to drive just as great as it does right now. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of compromise here and there, but I think I'm going to enjoy the full truck size life. Now, that being said, I'm hoping that the stars kind of align again, like I talked about in the beginning. A ton of you guys wanted to see me do a build with the Tundra, so now the question kind of continues. What exactly do you want to see me do with this truck? My plans initially are to kind of show you guys what is possible with a truck like this without spending thousands and thousands of dollars on gear because honestly a lot of trucks like this are very capable and i generally am using vehicles like this just to get out into the mountains and to camp so i do have some things on my mind of what i plan on kind of doing to this truck how i'm going to build it out but i'm curious if my thoughts are going to line up with the thoughts that you guys have out there. So I'm pretty tired after this long day of traveling and I'm gonna go inside and get some sleep. I gotta give another huge thank you to the entire team at Quality Toyota in Independence, Kansas. I am very particular with vehicles and luckily they were able to find this truck for me. It is exactly what I wanted and it's going to be the perfect platform to start a new project from. And this project, probably gonna be a long one since the Tundra is kind of new on the Toyota generation cycle. There's a good chance that I will have this truck for a long time and with a six and a half foot bed, that also means it's a great platform for the Kimbo camper. So you guys will see a lot more with this truck here on the channel soon. And I'd love to hear your comments, thoughts, feedback on anything. My brain's kind of mushy right now. So that was a lot of road time. I'm going to bed. If you guys are new here, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.